Baxter Street in the Echo Park neighborhood in Los Angeles, California is famous for its very steep slopes. And we're going to take a look at the vertical curve design for this street, particularly because there was a recent driver who rented a Tesla and drove up the slope at a very high rate of speed to purposely get airborne on the other side. So we'll take a look at what is that design speed of this vertical curve on Baxter Street. And this is actually a great example of the differences between horizontal and vertical alignment. So from a horizontal perspective, this is curved to the left or right. Baxter Street is actually pretty much perfectly straight. So there's no left or right movement to turn on this street. But that's very different in the vertical perspective. So vertically, there's a lot of slope. We have a crest curve. So that means we've got a, an upslope and a downslope. And they meet here in the middle where there's another street that's crossing through at an intersection and it's very steep on either side so we'll actually see those components we don't quite in this image have a perfect profile view but that's what we're trying to look for but this is from google earth and just giving us a sense of that there's a, a hill and a ridge line and, and baxter street kind of straddles that that ridge line on either side this is another image from google earth this is is looking at the profile view so the grades of the roadway on baxter street on this hill and we can see there's a roughly a, an average slope of 23 percent on one side and 28 percent on the other side these form a crest curve so we kind of see the that top slope in, in the in between that connects these slopes of 23 percent and 28 percent and in vertical alignment, vertical curves, we're really looking at one of the key components is the algebraic difference in grades, which is known as A. And we're going to add these two together because one is up, an upgrade, one is a downgrade, uphill and downhill. So 28% plus 23% is 51% algebraic difference in grades. And that's, that's huge. That's an extreme uh, algebraic difference in grades. Most curve, vertical curves are nowhere close to this. They can vary from very small up to larger, but obviously 51% is a very high algebraic difference in grades. And that's accomplished over a very short distance. So the length of curve here is approximately 175 feet. So we're transitioning from a very steep upgrade to a very steep downgrade over a short distance. And we'll see how that relates to a design to an actual design speed through this analysis and evaluation. So our key equation for vertical curves is L equals K times A, where L is the length of the curve, K is the rate of vertical curvature, and A is that algebraic difference in grades that we discussed. So we're going to take that equation, L equals K times A, we're going to plug in our known values, so we measure our length of 175 feet, and that's equal to K times 51%, which is our algebraic difference in grades. So we can solve that for K. So K equals 175 feet divided by 51% gives us a rate of vertical curvature of 3.4 feet per percent. And so what this is telling us is that we have this huge change in slopes. And we're going to make, we have to change a 1% level every 3.4 feet. So over that kind of short distance, 175 feet, every 3.4 feet, we're helping make that transition between those two steep grades. The Ashto Green Book provides us guidance on the design rate of vertical curvature, K, for in particular a crest vertical curve and looking at stopping sight distance, which is the basic type of sight distance that we need to provide for drivers. And we'll see this 3.4 feet per percent fits in this close to that 15 mile per hour design speed. So for this curve, it likely has a design speed of around 15 miles per hour. The operating speed should actually be less than the design speed, but that design speed is what it may have been uh, designed at. And again, that's a very sharp and very quick transition from one steep grade to another, and that's why you need a very low speed uh, to make that happen. Obviously during this stunt that's been in the news, they were purposely trying to get airborne but a driver that's driving 15 miles an hour or under it wouldn't have uh, much of a problem navigating uh, this vertical curve typically 
Another value we can look at if we think about that length of vertical curve, 175 feet that we measured, that's somewhere in the 60 to 65 mile per hour design speed range. Those values of K are consistent uh, with, with a value between 151 and 193 for a K. That's, the, again, the design rate of vertical curvature. And so what that is telling us is that so that 175 feet would typically be used to make a 1% transition between grades if the design speed was 60 to 65 miles per hour. So this just gives you an example of how sharp and how, how quickly that transition needs to take place for this particular vertical curve on Baxter Street.